Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Booze Blade Smoke 2.0, or TM2, I suppose is the technical term for it. Um, interesting knife, and a follow-up to a knife I reviewed way, way back when and really enjoyed. But first off, before I go any further, I gotta let you know, this guy was sent to me by, uh, by Booze himself, right? He, he said, hey Nick, you wanna check out the new smoke? I said, yeah, absolutely, sure. Um, and so, th there you go. But first off, you know, as always, I told him I'm gonna talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a it might be junk. He did still send it along. Nonetheless, we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that or the fact that I've, uh, you know, reviewed his stuff in the past affect the nature or quality of my review. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. Here it is first off against the Spydeco Delica. What we see here is this is actually a surprisingly long knife. Although the handle isn't all that long relative to the Delica, the uh, blade sure is. Here it is against the Spydeco PM2 and the Ontario Rat Number 2. And so again, what we see here is that the, the blade is quite long, actually slightly longer in sharpened length than the PM2, but at the same time, it is uh, not all that huge of a, of a knife. And I'll go ahead and I'll turn these guys on their side, and so what you're going to see here is... Uh, yeah, it's not the thinnest thing ever, but at the same time, there's that. And then finally, I do want to compare it, of course, against uh, a comparison I'll be making all review, and that is the Booze Blade Smoke TM1. This is the first generation Booze Blade Smoke. Um, and actually, this is, as I said, a new generation of the knife. This original one was made, I believe, by Wee Knives way back when. Um, and th th this is made by a new factory, in this case, uh, Bestec, um, and with a new design. In a lot of ways, it feels very similar to the old one, but in a lot of ways, it's it's also very new. So uh, we're going to be talking about that tension a little bit later on as we go into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of your Booze Blade Smoke DM2. So, first, uh, start is on the good side. The ergos on this knife are good. The uh, the clip on this guy is nice and wide, which is nice. It adds to reasonable erg. I mean, sure, you can feel the clip in there, but overall, ergonomically in the hand, you know what? This works pretty well. I appreciate that very much. Next thing, the uh, clip on this guy, as I was just talking about, is quite nice. Although it is a relatively shallow carry, this much of the knife is going to be hanging out of your pocket as you use it. Um, it's attractive. It's very well done. It's got plenty of ramp to it. It's got a nice amount of spring to it. Um, one can't really argue too much with the clip here, right? I, it's uh, it's very nice in that way. Um, and it's a very nice clip in terms of front flipping because as you front flip, you want to be able to hold the knife in this way. And having this clip right here, my fingers end up resting pretty naturally against that clip rather than against the lock bar, which makes this guy much easier to open up as intended. So that's actually a very nice thing. I appreciate that very much. Next thing, this guy can be easily two-hand opened, right? You can grab this guy, pop it open this way. This is good both in terms of uh, for fine motor situations, right? If you are uh, feeling like you're not necessarily able to get this guy front flipped out, you might still be able to do that. It's also nice in the lunchroom to be able to be nice and slow and, you know, take it that way. If Irma's in the corner being scared of your pocket knife, then, you know, you, you got yourself a choice there. That's, that's good. Next thing, this has some nice details. This one would expect from Bill Bose, right? Um, you got yourself a, uh, the, the hidden clip screw. Again, as always, that means the clip is mounted in from the bottom side, uh, rather from the, I'm sorry, rather than from the top. And in fact, it is just screwed straight in to the clip over here. So, um, that, that's a nice thing. It has a uh, uh, nice pivot to it. It's got this kind of custom-looking pivot here. I haven't seen that for anybody else, and so that, that, that's kind of cool, and I think it looks overall quite nice, and it also has the advantage of preventing the pivot from spinning freely, which is a good thing when during disassembly. Next thing, it does have a, uh, a floating backspacer here. Unlike the original, which had just a sort of good old-fashioned, you know, spacer backspacer, this guy has a floating spacer with a pair of washers there and that little piece of tie in the middle there, and actually you'll see here that the back spacer is kind of hooked up in the back there to help guard the tip of the knife from uh, being able to be touched uh, as you are, you know, sliding your hand into your pocket or reaching in to grab it or anything like that. That's a nice little detail. Then finally, the sculpting on this guy is quite nice. You can see here he's got sort of a central brrrp. That's the technical term, by the way, a brrrp. Um, but that brrrp is quite good. I, I think it looks it looks pretty cool, and it definitely adds a little bit of motion to it. Um, Booze Blades is a company that has done, or a designer that is, that is done very well at capturing motion in objects that are standing still. And I think that captures that as well with the brrrr there. I th it looks quite nice. Um, uh, so that's good. Next thing, the blade on this guy is quite nice. This is using an upgraded steel. It's M390 versus the um, S35 in some of the earlier models. Um, so that's a nice little upgrade. And it is also uh, super thin behind the edge. 
we take a look at this, we see here, yeah, that comes down to a very, very nice thin edge on both sides. Can't really argue with that. The blade on this guy is quite good. Um, so that's nice. Then finally, uh, actually not quite finally, the action on this guy is good. And what we see here is that it actually has an upgrade in the front flipper shape. The original Booze Smoke has the front flipper kind of curled back a little bit, whereas this has a much more prominent, much higher flipper tab, which makes this actually a little bit easier to front flip for a lot of people. Um, the original is great, but at some level, especially being used to modern front flippers, I kind of prefer this new approach, which is you just keep it up there a little bit higher. It just makes it easier, and it makes it a little bit less fine motory to be able to do it. Um, the other thing that's worth noting is actually, in terms of opening it, the, uh, the hole here is more useful. I can actually get my finger in there and pop this guy open just by flicking it open uh, with the index finger there, and that's actually a nice thing. Um, it gives you another option for opening this guy. So that's good. And then the action, of course, is still very, very smooth. Um, that's, that's excellent. Next thing, the fit and finish on this guy are nice. In fact, I would even argue that the surface finishes are a little bit nicer. This has a little bit more luminosity than the original, uh, the, the, the Wii surface finish for a long time had always a feeling of like darkness or dirtiness to it, whereas this feels very much more, um, I don't know how to put it, but it just feels a little bit more resplendent. God, that's pretentious. It just feels a little bit lighter. Um, feels a little bit more reflective. And so I, I like the surface finish on that. And same thing, by the way, with the blade here. Um, this does look like a, a stonewash sort of finish, but again, it just doesn't seem... It, this feels a little bit lighter than this guy does at the same angle. So I like that very much. And then finally, uh, the, the, the overall design is still a lot to like here, right? So uh, I think it looks fast at rest, and that's the very best thing that Booze does, right? And so to me, all that is the good. It's got a nice overall design, great fit and finish, great action, great blade, good details. It's too hand openable with a very good clip and uh, nice ergos. On the bad side, or I'm sorry, no, I skipped one on the great side. On the great side, this guy is just super carryable, right? Because it is a super thin knife. Um, it, Both, I mean, okay, it's not the thinnest thing ever on this dimension, right? If we hold it up next to the Delica, we see it is actually thicker than the Delica, but it is super thin on this dimension. You hang this guy in the back corner of your pocket, you can have no problems getting past it, right? There's no flipper tab down here. There's nothing else sticking out past you here. It's just very easy to get past, and it's very tall, so it just kind of hangs out back there, but you get a lot of blade out of it, right? Um, it's lightweight, it is smooth, it just slips well into the pocket. This is a knife that is very, very easy to carry, and the fact that it is that front flipper just makes it just completely smooth on the back side here, and coupled with this angle, yeah, that's good. This is just great in the pocket, and so to me, that's what's great here, is you have a very long uh, and actually reasonably big blade, but just carries really well. On the bad side, um, to start with, there is no lanyard hole on this guy. Uh, the original one had a lanyard hole in the back. I'm fine with that, but I can imagine some lanyard folks might not be, so do keep that in mind. Next thing, front flippers are not for everybody, right? Um, a front flipper with the top here where you can open it like so. This is very much, well, it's a unique thing. And this is, by the way, not a reach over index finger flipper. I am reasonably skilled at that approach and just not able to do that here. So this is very much a thumb, you know, lighter flick style uh, front flipper more than anything else. And so that's not for everybody. And there is a little bit of a fine motor uh, aspect to doing that that is not present, for instance, with as much, well, certainly as much in thumb starter flipper tap knives. So there's that. Next thing, this guy is screwing into the titanium on the other side here. It's going directly in here and directly into the clip on the other side. So as a result, if the clip strips out or if this uh, any of these screws strip out, you're going to have a bad time. So you need to be very careful not to be over-tightening these guys. That's not a great thing, as opposed to in the original where there was actually a barrel in here and you could just replace the hardware without replacing the entire knife. So um, there is that. It makes for a cleaner show side as well um, when you do, I'm sorry, a cleaner clip side, that is, which is kind of weird, by the way, that it's going in from the show side to the clip side, but I also understand that he's securing the clip with the, so whatever, it does, uh, that's a thing. Next thing, um, this guy is, uh, it does have this external uh, lock bar relief here, which, right, this this little area here, and I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't really do it for me. Um, on the original, it didn't really do it for me either, but it felt a little more dynamic, at least, with this thing coming, coming down in there. This just feels like random 
uh, you know, drilled that. That's as opposed to a verp um, on the backside there. Uh, but this, it just doesn't feel like it's particularly flowing with the design or anything. I kind of wish that were internal, right? So you couldn't see that on this side. Um, and there are a couple of other details that are a little bit weird. Uh, one of them is that the sharpening choil is just the tiniest little hint off. You can barely see it, but if you actually hold this up against the straight edge, um, there is a little tiny bit of grind, and this guy sticks out just a little bit further than the remaining blade. Little detail, but it's it's a thing. Um, it, it is uh, the pivot is just a little bit proud of the rest of the handle, and given that the knife is already reasonably thick, I don't know. I kind of like the, uh, the the complete flush pivot on a little bit better on the last version of it. And then the centering is just a little bit off here. And I think it's really, like, this is centering I don't really give a damn about. But when it's put up against this, um, uh, the, 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 the floating backspacer here, that's not ideal, right? You want it to be right about here, but it's right about there. It's a little tiny detail. I'm being retentive there. But at the same time, it is definitely a thing. And I'd kind of like to see it centered a little bit more than that. Um, especially if you're going to draw attention to it. Next thing, the whole, I got to be honest, this doesn't do it for me, right? Because A, the knife is not actually lighter with it than the other one. They've had to add a bunch of depth in order to do that kind of milling. Um, and so it, it doesn't add a functional purpose. And in practice, yeah, it kind of looks a little bit cool when the blade is uh, closed, but when you open it up, what are you looking at through this window? It just kind of feels like random stuff in there, right? It's kind of like one of those windows. If you've got like an, a city apartment, right? And you've got a window, but it's facing directly at the brick wall of the building next to you. It's like, yeah, it's good that I've got a window, but the scenery ain't much, right? And that's kind of how I feel about this. The scenery ain't much. And particularly with this little bit in here, had he done some kind of detail? Had he put his logo on the inside there? Had he done something that gives me something to look at? That's great, but otherwise it just kind of feels like, why, why is there a hole there? Right? Um, the, and, you know, this had holes there, too, but at the very least, they, they seem to be, it's a little darker, right? It gives visual intrigue, as opposed to this is just, like, the window to nowhere. And so I feel like there's maybe some detail on the inside there that could have made that more interesting or something, but ultimately, I just don't care for the hole, because you're just looking at something you don't want to look at down in there. Um, and so that's that's a little bit weird to me. Um, next thing, this guy is actually about a millimeter thicker at, at pretty much every point I could measure than the original. Right? And that's, um... Not necessarily ideal, right? I tend to like thinner knives, and the fact that you're thickening, and this is, by the way, not a huge thickness increase, but it is definitely noticeable. It is a, a, a thing there. And so you want to keep that in mind as well. This is not going to carry quite as thinly as the original uh, smoke. The other thing is the price went up. Um, the, the original was 200 bucks, given that was a couple of years ago, I'd say three years ago or so. Um, it's now up to 240 and some of that, for sure, is going to be inflation. Some of that's M390, but these things, especially these kinds of, you know, single maker pieces get harder and harder to compete when the prices are going up and up, right? And so I, I am sorry to see that, right? Uh, I feel like this would have been much more competitive right now uh, at 200 bucks than it is right now. But I also know that everything's getting more expensive these days. So there's that. Next thing, this is a very long blade, right? We are coming in here just over three and a half inches, which is going to actually be unfortunate for a number of people. It's about nine centimeters, um, but even then just over it, right? So this is going to be over legal lines for a bunch of people, but it really didn't need to be. Is that extra little bit, you know, this extra much blade actually doing anything for you? No, not really. But it does make it a felony in some places, and that's, that's not great. And then finally, availability of these guys is always a little bit limited, right? At the time of the writing, only the green color is available, um, and these are being sold by Bose himself. And so, unfortunately, you can't just pop online and order one of these guys from your regular retailer, at least at the time of uh, filming. I'm hoping there are going to be more of these available, and I'm sure it's going to be in small batches, right? Because, you know, Bose doesn't have the capital to just drop, you know, 15 million of these guys or something like that. But at the same time, um, availability has historically been a problem for these, and I imagine it's going to continue in the future here. So, to me, all of that is the bad, is that the availability is limited. They are oddly long. The price did go up. It's a little bit thicker than the original. The hole doesn't really do it for me much. Um, the, the, the external lock bar, mm, 
not really my thing. The relief, that is, not really my thing. Um, it's got a couple of weird little details. The screw's going into the tie on the other side. It is a front flipper, which ain't for everybody, and there is no lanyard hole if you give a damn about that. Well, technically, there's a very large one, but it would just be bad for it, right? Anyways, um, on the ugly front, there's nothing particularly ugly here. Maybe the price increase, but even still, it's been three years, inflation's a thing. Um, let's go to the final conclusion, which is that, honestly, this is kind of an interesting follow-up to a knife that I really, really like. And it does have a lot of the good with the, the original, right? It's got solid ergos, a nice clip, an easy two-hand opening. It's got nice details, a great blade, great action, great fit and finish, a nice overall design, and really good carryability. It is lacking a lanyard hole, if you care. It's got a front flipper, which isn't going to be for everybody. The screws are straight into the tie. The choil's a bit off. Lock bar relief is breaking up the lines a little bit. The, the, the hole here isn't really for me. Um, it's got, it's thicker, generally speaking, both in terms of dimension and in terms of price. It's a little unusual being this long and this thin and just over a legal line, unfortunately, and availability will probably continue to be a problem. Final conclusion, this is actually kind of interesting because it's sort of a weird sequel to the TM1, right? Um, it is clearly a successor, right? You can't look at this and look at this and go, oh, wow, you know, those, those must be two entirely different designs, but it kind is at some level, right? Um, it is not the same knife. There are upgrades in some ways, with the nicer steel, the nicer backspace, or at least in my estimation, slightly easier opening methods and nicer finishing, but there are downgrades in others, with the hole to nowhere. Uh, it's got thicker construction, and it's a pretty big price raise on this guy. And so ultimately, it's been kind of weird for me as a review to evaluate, because it's not a conventional sequel. It's not a conventional follow-up, right? It's not doing the usual thing of, you know, oh, well, we kept the things people loved about the first one, and then just made some improvements. This feels like a different knife. It feels like a very lateral shift, right? Got a Bose giveth and Bose taketh away. And ultimately, make it a recommendation is kind of hard here. I mean, we can assume some of the price hike is just everything getting more expensive lately, as well as the end of the era of bargain Chinese production for good designers. That seems to be sort of on the way out. Bose caught the early wave of that, and I think we're on the edge of the other end of that one, right? Um, That's definitely a thing. Um, And for me personally, I actually prefer the TM1 a little bit more. I mean, that's kind of academic, right? Because you're not going to be able to find one, but... It the design speaks to me a little bit more, and even if I can't appreciate the sculpting of the burp here, um, I can appreciate the thinness a little bit more as the, the, the reduced pricing, right? But I also admit fully that there is a matter of taste here. Some folks will like the TM2 a little bit more, right? Both aesthetically and in terms of opening, in terms of function, in terms of steel, and that kind of thing. Um, And so, and other folks might not like the TM2, but they'll buy this because this is a boost smoke that they can get. And ultimately, this is kind of tough, and it put, I really hope that it would be just strictly an improvement, right? I'd be like, wow, it's the smoke I love, but just made better. But instead, it's just different. As a sequel, I gotta be honest, I'm a little disappointed. I had hoped that this would be just like, oh my god, a strict improvement over the original, but that's not what happened. That said, as a knife, independently, if we kind of take this out of the picture and I'm just looking at the TM2 up here, as a knife, it's still pretty damn good, right? It may not have been the sequel I was hoping for. And, you know, TM1 owners don't feel any pressure to upgrade. I think you're about where you want to be. But if you've never had a booze smoke before, if you like the style and you're willing to pay that price, then I think this could still very easily be a gem for you. And you'll realize that, well, just why so many people have appreciated the knife and its function, its geometry, and its design. And I think if you pick one of these guys up, ultimately, especially out of the context of the first one, you're going to realize that the people who love the smoke design... Well, they weren't just blowing smoke. Anyways, there you go. I'll stop hounding you with uh, booze jokes. And uh, sorry, that's a uh, doggo joke on the back there. Nice logo, by the way. And uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. I hope you didn't miss the rest of the review. Smoke missed? No? Okay. Anyways, uh, it was particularly good because smoke is particles. And Okay, moving on. Bye now.